All right, let's move on to the next question. Okay, so I'd very much like to set it up uh, as a follow-up, because I do not think that you understood what my, the guy before me asked. The problem is that your political viewpoint, your, view, your, your viewpoint and why you acted like you acted, is highly US-centric, that's the point. It's not about that you want to, whatever, US-centric. If I'm from Europe, I do not care shit about the US government, and actually I do not care... And I don't give a shit about my government because I think the nation states are crap, okay? And we should not in any way uh, support nation states in whatever they do with their bullshit, okay? I mean, we are a community of hackers, we are internationalists, okay? And we should work together and cooperate and not just like blame some guy because he actually really did the right thing. Uh, the right thing means. I mean, we didn't start the stupid war here. <laughs> Come on, it's their shit. Yeah, that's not the Alright, alright. So, uh, I might sound a little bit naive here, but I think that we should focus on an international point of view and not about what's good for the United States, okay? I'm going to respond quickly, briefly to that and say. I don't support every action that the United States takes, and you know what? That's my right as a citizen of this country to do. And in a lot of countries, that would get you a bullet to the head. Um, I, if I seem like I'm focusing on the United States, that might have something to do with the fact that I'm, I'm an American citizen, my dad's a dual national, I've lived overseas, but we are sitting in a hotel that is, last time I checked, was located in the United States of America, um, that has afforded us the opportunity to have this conference, even though a lot of people in the government don't really understand what we're about and somehow see us as a threat. And despite that, we have the freedom to to hold this conference, to have talks about things that to the uninformed observer would sound threatening. And that's not something that you get in a lot of places, so I think that that's pretty darn cool to have as an opportunity in this country. Okay, next question. Go ahead. Hi, Adrian. Uh, I'm under the impression that uh, you could be culpable if it came back, you know, somehow they got, if they realized that this person was doing it by other means, they would have figured it out eventually, possibly, uh, through other investigations, and then they would have seen the chat log to you, and then you could have been culpable, you know, criminally for this also, it seems to me. It, was that a part of your thinking? You know what, I'm not a jurist, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a judge, I don't have the legal background to be able to say whether or not that would have been the case. My first reaction and my main reaction was, holy frack and crap, 260,000 documents, do you think that you could look through those and say that they're not going to cause anybody's life to be lost or our ability to try and make the world a better place, which we do in a lot of ways. We provide aid to other countries. We also make the world a worse place in, a lot, in some ways, but we're not a perfect nation. No nation is perfect. We actually have something on the screen right now that's uh, amazingly uh, peculiar. Uh, Bernie, you want to explain what this misprison, whatever the word that uh, is? Misprision of a felony. It's, it's, oh. it's United States uh, uh, criminal statute. I, I wanted to ask you, Adrian, sorry to interrupt the next speaker here, but um, did it, did it, um, was, was your decision to do what you did uh, influenced in any way by your potential uh, risk liability for not uh, telling the government what you learned because you could be criminally liable for uh, not divulging what you were aware of? Again, I, I don't have a JD and I'm not a jurist, but before all this happened, I had never, I had never heard the term that's hard to pronounce uh, that's on the screen behind me. Um, I... Well, you heard of cover your ass before, though. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I think most people in this audience have. Or is the accessory after the fact? Yeah. Um, but again, my main reaction was holy frack and crap, 260,000 documents. And I think that there's a reason that the uh, keynote yesterday uh, totally ignored that, and that's because that's much harder to get an emotional rise out of the audience when you, it's easy to say, I'm against murder, who's with me on that? Yeah, no on murder. It's harder to say, I'm for releasing over a quarter million diplomatic documents related to US, the United States and US citizens. Who's with me? <laughs> Next question. Establishing that you're opposed to murder, that's great. Uh, but I, there's something that I was unclear on. How long has it been since you've had an active restraining order against you for abusing a girlfriend? <laughs> I met your ex-girlfriend. She is a lovely human being, and she's holding awful things. This about. might be delving into the personal world a little bit, but uh, I don't think she is answer that. I have never been served with a restraining order, and there's never been one that's been active against me. Liar. All right. Let's move on. Kind of too bad that that got cut off, but um, Adrian, I, I do take to heart what your own pirate said. Um, I do believe in it too. That I couldn't. Uh, I, I think you were in a very difficult position, and that if I were in that position, um, well, I don't feel I would have made the same decision. But knowing that you did, I can accept that you did. Mm -hmm. But I really, really hope that you can actually make some good choices coming up in the future to repair some of the damage that you have caused. Mm -hmm. um, before you walk away from the mic, um, apart from Mr. Manning's criminal case, could you clarify a little bit on that damage briefly? Uh, because I, I'm not clear on where it's where. From my perspective, I see what you have done as treason. Okay. All right, next question. Hi, Adrian. Digital communication seems to allow us these days the possibility, although perhaps not easily, to take our identities and to separate them. They start to spread apart. We can take that option. We can take the option to be different people, different people, to act different ways. They all see us differently. You have identified with in a broader social American identity. I was wondering, what do you think about ethics, morals, uh, guiding principles for your identity? Does it need to be cohesive? Does it need to be singular? I don't believe that I have standing to speak to that. I also don't necessarily know that I understand the question. Could it probably to very briefly rephrase it? Hypothetically, if you could imagine someone like you that had heard this, could you imagine a part of yourself that would have had the choice not to tell? Yes, I can. I, it's, I'll admit that it's unabashedly selfish of me to say this, given what I've said, but I wish to hell that Bradley Manning had never said a word to me. Uh, it's been... I mean, obviously it's been much worse for him, but it's certainly been no picnic for me, and I knew from the get-go that it was going to be a low point in my interactions with the community, and I also... Yes, you could have ignored him. When he first contacted you, you were not obliged to ever answer him. You could have simply ignored him under the civil defense. And Mr. Manning could have ignored the diplomatic cables, and he could have ignored the collateral murder video, but he followed his conscience as I did mine. 